Um, oh, I guess this one was. Excuse me, Zach. Just ask one question. And the yeah. payment of fifty thousand dollars is independent of the approval of the stormwater plan. It's a it's a condition in and of itself. And it's not. Okay. Yes. Um, number nine, the applicant shall not remove, plant, or alter any trees or vegetation on a village's rail trail property without written permission from the village, except to install access ways approved by the village. Um, number 10, the site plan has been designed with multiple curbing that would allow emergency vehicles to cross if needed. If such emergency access damages plantings along the road frontage, the applicant must promptly replace the landscaping in conformance with the site plan. Number 11, the parking lot has been designed with 30 spaces with the opportunity to convert part of the unloading area to an additional parking space if necessary. If the applicant determines that an additional parking space is needed in the future, the space currently designated as part of the unloading area may be converted to a parking space upon approval by the building inspector without further planning board review. Number 12, all painted markings on the pavement included, including parking lot markings, pedestrian walkway, and pavement treatment around the building entrance shall be maintained and repainted as needed for the life of the project. Uh, 13, deliveries to the property shall not interfere with street traffic, block sidewalks, or prevent adequate access to parking facilities. Okay. Um, so in that case, I'd like to get a motion to approve the uh, this resolution of approval for PB 22-10. So moved. Uh, and can I get a second? Second. And could we have a roll call vote, please, Autumn? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Well, thank, thank you all. For now, appreciate all your time with us. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Off the races. Yeah. Great. Good news. <laughs> now, now, now more work again. Another real fun. Sorry. Yes, yeah. exciting. Anyway, thank you all very so much. Nice really. thank, you all of you. thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next up, can we have PB 2403 27 29 Main Street? And I'm going to mute myself. Oh no, this is the Hello, I'm John Joseph. Hello there. Um, How are you guys? Good. Good. Let me see. We have this plan coming out here. So, so um the last time I was here, you asked me to review the um architectural Gateway districts, and I did, and I sent a letter to you regarding that. Um, so, do you want to go through the letter? Um, yeah, I mean, could you first talk us through any changes you made to the site plan, and then we can go through the, the so letter? I'll we'll go through the letter, and then we'll talk about the site plan because the letter kind of sure. dovetails right. into it. So, <clears throat> I took the, the opportunity to read the Gateway District um, adopted by the village in February 10th, 1999. Um, most of that statute deals with new builds, the designing of the site and the parking lots on new builds. In this case, as I said in my letter, that we are, we have two existing buildings. Um, this was a driveway, okay, that was actually part of this, this when I acquired the property, I took up the asphalt and, pay, and put grass down. This was a vacant lot that must have had a building on it at some point because there's a uh, foundation, exposed foundations there. So um, this is a buildable lot. 
Um, this lot is just um, ancillary parking and parking for, well, I guess the bank must have needed it for their employees at one point. So when we decided to, when we found the two tenants, we went to the Architectural Review District Board and they came up with the design that I included in the letter. I don't know. If, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can put it up. You guys have seen it. Yep. Yeah. So that was their design. Um, then we went to the Shade Tree Commission, and there's a letter from Christine Marmo and um, the horticulturist of what they wanted us to do there, and we met with them as well. And that those trees and things that are there are their recommendations. Um, You're talking about over over here. Correct. Right. Yeah, that's what they asked us to do. Um, so they didn't have any recommendations on on this. Well, they talked about one, maybe possibly putting one tree here, but I, I, you know, I don't. I think it's going to block her view. So what I've been doing here is, over in this area, I planted um, wildflowers. You know, like a pollinator garden here, and I did a pollinator garden here, and I'm probably going to do the same thing out here and put some bluestone and some seeding. So we're just kind of cleaning up the site plan, but. When we talked about specifically talked about these six parking spaces when I was here the last time, and your the code, um, the uh, Gateway District provides for parking, and it specifically states that. Oh, do we have a copy of the letter? I have the the um, the. Uh, HPC number. I'm, I'm not finding uh, the letter from the applicant. Pretty sure we have it. I seem to remember reading. Five PDF files and folder. And I read these them before the meeting. I don't. I don't well, could well, you make? I have a copy of it here. If you want to make copies for the board, that's possible. And you can continue the explanation of the parking, but I, yeah. I so the Gateway District um, parking it talks about most of the year parking is difficult to find. Then it says parking lots should be such that conflicts between the motorists and the pedestrians are avoided. And it says that it should be located in close proximity to the proposed land use. Well, this is the proposed land use. This avoids any potential conflicts. And I think we can all agree it's not so easy to find parking here sometime in some year. In fact, Saturday I was up here. I had to come down here for something. There were 10 cars in this lot. And this lot was pretty much full. There's probably 25 cars in it. Um, other than Debbie's coveted spots, which she guards. These were fairly full. So I don't, the banks closed. They were not in the liquor store. So this, these six parking spaces are not new. There were four. <clears throat> you guys don't have a ladder, but so this is an overview. This, this was the driveway. And if you Google Earth it, you can see it was a paved driveway that we removed. Then there's these four parking spaces that are here. And in fact, you can see there's a car that's not even in one of the spaces. That was actually there Saturday. There was a car parked like that Saturday. So what we're simply proposing is to take these four spaces, move them, you know, for safety and, and logical reasons to the front of the, the building. We're losing two parking spaces over here where the dumpster's going. And that would accommodate, that would give you the total of six. So the six we're losing, we're just relocating to here. So that's, like I said, I, when I review the, the statute, I think the purpose of the statute regarding the parking is met by the safety of removing them from this awkward position, which is where they are now, <clears throat> and putting them to you know service the business, which is, it says, close to the land use, which is what that is. Is that all? Yes. Okay, because you're conveniently leaving out the next sentence of that 
that document you're quoting no. that says all parking areas must be sited behind the structure where parking is visible from a side street, a planting buffer must be established I, adjacent to the street. That's what this is. These are, um, sorry, I've been, I added all this. These are box words. <laughs> and I can continue. I mean, if you want me to put a bigger buffer or more trees or something taller, I can, but I am providing the buffer. This is 13 feet. This is the part in between there where it says the parking has to be behind the building. But it says where parking is visible from the side street. Right. And this is where it would be visible. Yeah, very visible. The building, and still visible. No, but it says where parking is visible from a side street, which is what would apply here. Yeah, I I think we need much more of a buffer than whatever this like one one foot That's about green four feet. Strip. That's about four feet. Okay. This is this is you know, five feet. This is thirteen feet. Yeah, and we're not we're not objecting to to this area over here of green space. I appreciate that you added some some more landscaping. That's you know that's great. I think we need something at least this size along Main Street to buffer those those parking that well, parking lot. So this space is approximately twelve feet per space. Okay, so maybe that we just eliminate those two spaces. Well, there's one space, there's one space. This is a 12 foot space, and that would give you the four plus 12. That would give you more than what you have here. You got you have about 15 feet between Main Street and the first parking space. And here you only have 13. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I, I still would, would prefer if we just had, had the uh, ADA accessible spots there and um well you know we i agree you know, with where zach thinks i'm sorry i agree with where zach's going on it i think the gateway guidelines are um, first of all they're guidelines and then and then there's the planning board that gets to discuss and, and determine how to apply them and also um they're they're i think of them as being uh, something that we want to refer to when the applicant is required to develop parking in order to accommodate the requirements of the use. In this case, the property currently exceeds the requirements for the use. And I, I do have a question about the bulk table because I think the parking numbers are off there. But in a case where uh, we have a property that currently exceeds the requirements for the use in mm -hmm. parking, where we um, we have a village that covets every bit of its green space and wishes we could mm -hmm. add more. And we're looking at a location within the village that is probably the most attract unattractive of any locations in our village because of the amount of paved land and parking. I don't think this board should be considering the elimination of that small amount of green space that, that has the potential to beautify your property for the addition of parking that exceeds the required number of parking spots and puts them right alongside Main Street in a location that is contrary to what the gateway standards are saying, which is let's try not to put parking in front of an entrance so that we look like every other suburban strip mall in this state. Yeah, well said. Well, so it's there now. It's not there now. It's a patch of grass now. It once was there with these diagrams you're well, sharing, but that doesn't matter. No, but it, it was actually a paved driveway. And it doesn't even matter if it was there now. We could ask you to pave it. I mean, we could ask you to green it because that's when you when you when you apply for a project like this, it's it's our responsibility and opportunity to make sure that we're maximizing the beautification of it. I do appreciate the responsiveness to what seems to be the HPC's comments from a while back and how you were responsive to a lot of things they recommended, which helped beautify the appearance of the building. This is one that I think is, is uh, almost feels easy to me, but it seems like your persistence to ensure that these are here is because of a, you know, a commercial interest or a business interest of the bank. But I would, assume, I would hope that the business and, per and cons commercial interest of the bank would be to have a beautiful small patch of grass in a place where there is none. It is, and that's what I'm saying. If from like if 
you're concerned about green space, I can rip up nine of these spaces. But let, well, let's talk about it. how many spaces do you think I'm over? Because I after how many how many spaces do you think that we are over? Because I lost two over here. Well, your table tells us that ten. No, I think it's nine now because of the two from the dumpster. I think I'm down to nine. Okay. Well, there's there's some discrepancy over here. Yeah, because the thing that says it adds up to fifty five actually, I think, adds up to fifty four. So, um, I'll count them. So, one, two, three. You see the required yep. in your table? Seven plus 30 plus 11. Well, let's, let's establish that first. So, I got, I got 10, 12, and 6. What I'm adding up, John, is the requirement. Right here. 7 yeah, plus right. 30 plus 11 plus 6 is 40. It's 54, not. 55. So your requirement is 54. And we have. And as I read, you're provided, unless it's incorrect, it indicates 64. Yeah, I, so there's 10 more spaces than required. And I, I think there was nine because I, and that might be, not be correct, but I counted up as nine. I think it was because of these two that we lost. Okay. But, but if the concern is green space, aren't we better off? I can give you all nine or 10, whatever the number is here. And then you'd have substantially more green space and the proximity of the parking and the land use would be consistent with the guidelines. And you'd still, you'd be better off. You'd have more green space. It's not just the, the quantity, it's the location. And I don't believe it would be consistent with the guidelines to only have parking right right along the road so if yeah if we i mean i'm open to adding more green space over here certainly but i think it's important that we have some well, along there as well can, can i can we what is the what is the reason that these four spaces are important to the plan no, these four is because I could see how these two could be ADA accessible, could be a really convenient, pull up a couple of spaces. But these one, two, three, four, you know, my what is the what is the requirement that of these four spaces? Like try to convince, I think what I'm saying, try to convince us as to why that's so important to the application. Well, it's it's really customer convenience, and as it says here, it's really needs to be closer to the land use because the gym will will have on average fifteen people in at any given time. The bank will have approximately ten, and the liquor store seems to have plus or minus six. So that when you when you add up the practicality of what each tenant would be constructively using it, you know, and again, this is peak hours. This is not going to be every day, all day. That's about the number. That gives you their, gives them the 10 parking spaces they need. It gives the bank the 15 and gives the liquor store six. So that gives us really peak hour parking demand for the customers of the, the business, to service the business. And we're going to ask employees to park over here. So obviously that, um, you know, there's not going to be that many employees. So this, this is not as important because people are not going to park here and go to the credit union. They may go to the gym. So, so the, the financial services is a credit union. Correct. My, and so my question is, so you've got all those things when you say peak hours, peak hours for the bank are probably not the same peak hours as the gym and probably not the same peak hours. Yeah, they're the all liquor store. They're all different. They're so, all different. so they're. I, I'm agree with that. But you know, it's it's hard to say. Okay, well, you can use because the the financial institution wants ten dedicated spots. Debbie wants six dedicated spots. You know, the financial institution asking right. for that. The 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 requirement in the code is that they would only require seven spaces, which usually includes, if I understand the code correctly, includes employees. Well, I think so. That, even though they want that as a convenience, it doesn't mean that it's it's an obligation to 
approve it in the plan. No, but what I'm saying is I think there's, look, there's code and there's practicality. I can tell you we own the ShopRite Plaza. That entire parking lot was built for four days a year. Christmas, the day before Christmas. I mean, it's, we don't ever want to do that again. Well, That's what I think I, we're not I, getting across. I know. I'm but trying what hard. You no, know, I understand that. And like I said, this was a building. I'm not proposing to build a building. I'm happy to leave it green space. But uh, I just want to be a little give and take here because I want green space too. That's why I took up the asphalt. It was slightly, but you're putting it back. Don't you? How can you not understand? <laughs> I how am. Listen, that is. listen, Rich. I am understanding what you're saying. Okay. I was so just, then, I would like to see your understanding result in a responsive plan. Well, that's just my that's question to you is, if I give up one space, that leaves me with five, and you got you have a similar situation. You got about 15 feet here, and I can. Do boxwoods in there to sheet, you know, to hide it from the cars or whatever type of plantings you'd like. That would give them four, let's see, one, two, three, four, five spaces there. And then they'd have five over here. That's not the way it works. The way it works is you have a property that has an aggregate number of spaces that we have to account for in the context right. of the code requirement and the availability. And, and in just this conversation, at one point you said the bank needs 15 spaces. No, the bank, the bank, the gym needs 15, the bank needs 10. Okay. But the, but the code requirement is seven. I understand, so, but, but then there's, but the tenant has to operate. And if the tenant, and, if and I the, say the, the tenant, bank needs got... 10, even if we allowed the two ADA spots by that entrance, it, there is there are plenty of spaces, and and they would be and they would have to be here, and the gym would have to be here. Even in the quick iteration that you shared about what you think the usage would be, it's all accounted for there. So there's just no need for more paved parking in a location that already has green. And I, my recommendation and my request, and I'm one member of this planning board, but my request. Is that there are there, there I understand and I would I would advocate for the need for ADA spots as close as possible to the front entrance of the credit union, but I would refuse to approve a plan that adds paved and and giving back one space is not accounting for what I'm sharing. I would refuse to approve a plan that paves four more parking spots alongside of Main Street that don't exist today. They do exist. They're right here. That that, that don't They're alongside all Main Street is what I said that don't exist today. And eliminate a piece of green in a place that is entirely paved. And um, what about? I think that's what I. Have what to about say. sharing this, removing some of this asphalt to give you the green space, provide the service that they need. I mean, look, this lot. You know, I, if I didn't, if I didn't own this lot, what would you do? What would we do? It's not relevant. It is relevant because that lot have a very good offer on that lot. It may be relevant. Well, then you'd have to change your application completely to account for the fact that you don't own that parking. But now you own that parking. That okay. is a another or, area. Or you would apply for a variance, and I'm sure that the ZBA would be happy to consider that. You know, I I, I guess the, guys, the board has is is trying to in the village. It's not just the planning board. The the village um, is moving towards encouraging more pedestrian and bicycles and, and we we are moving away from the like strip mall use of the 70s where everything is just parking lots and overbuilding parking so i, I understand all that but i can tell you what are you going to do with the 30 cars that were here on saturday if there's less parking then people will adjust their behavior and you can put a sign up that says this is parking for the I've been towing business. people out of the uh, pizza parking lot yeah. and it still doesn't stop. That's that's what you have to do. I don't believe you'll ever have a circumstance where there will not be parking to use the facilities in your place. And the code says so. And and my experience as a village resident says so. And I and I and I'm certain. That this that the code was written for a purpose, and we're here to try to be proxy for the code. And the code says you got you need a certain number of spots, and they're already there. And well, they're here and here. Yeah, they're there. 
You're there as a part of the application. This is your application. If you want to sell this lot, okay. then you have to reconfigure what you're proposing. For no, I'm just going to, I can resubmit, remove this lot from the application. And then the parking problem is solved. I actually think then you won't have enough parking, even if you pave the whole thing over uh, in, in more ways. But if, if that's, <clears throat> if you want to try to do that, no, if you can, then look, we're, we're here. It, but, but you are telling me I can get a van, I can seek a variance because you don't need the parking. Actually, one the one of the businesses in town wants to buy this lot, and he's been after me forever because he doesn't have parking. Okay. I mean, does that well, solve I, our problem? We we can't speculate on. Yeah, I, I don't want to like get into these hypotheticals. No, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna reapply. So, but let's have a conversation of what's going to come back. So, let's assume this was gone. The only way for me to comply was to be on my own lot. I wanted to seek a variance for fewer, for less parking, yeah. Right. So I would seek a variance for what I have here. Would the board support that? Yeah. If if you remove a couple of these spots and landscape this buffer, then yes, we would support that. You might be well under. <laughs> oh, come on. You guys are killing me. I, I mean, look, I, I think if if you remove two of those spots that would be kind of the the minimum that i would be comfortable with um but i don't i don't believe that one you know 12 foot parking spot okay so enough. let me ask let's let's at least we're having also i mean we shouldn't speculate on what a different plan no, no, no. that's I not the consideration well it won't comply yeah. with what, I'm, what i'm trying to figure out is like i want to have as much green space as possible. You're going to see all these plants removed, the loose stone patios, wildflowers, irrigation. I'm going to redo the whole front of the building. I want to be a good neighbor. But I, I, the tenants are going to have certain needs of parking, whether you, the village thinks that they don't, people don't park here. I can tell you, I come to the village, I've been coming here since 1979 to use all of the wonderful things you have here, the hiking, the biking, all the other stuff. When I'm done with that, I want to come into town and have lunch or dinner, and I need a place to park. And you have to face that. Like I said, go here on a Saturday afternoon, see how many people are in this lot. I don't think that eliminating this or or putting green space here is really going to solve anybody's concern here. And I can't speak for everybody. I think Tim would was that lot henry's hardware it was like a building right i, I mean when i was a kid it was, it was connected to the right i think it was like the old henry's hardware store so it was like a building that came right up to the street and again you're not seeing the the the, the parking from the from here well, the but if you so the it's terrible. it's the green space and it's the the street facade as much as anything like because again right now you just don't want to see a sea of impervious surfaces it, it's not it's not conducive to anything and and so i understand that they're looking for a certain number but given the different hours of usage and the ability to shrink some of this can you put a proposal together that that comes and creates this as a as a usable green space rather than just a, a border of boxes. Well, then it also comes to the point where, so when you say, let's assume two spots. What would you want me? What would you like planted in there? And I agree, the border of boxwoods is a terrible idea. I would rather see ornamental grasses and wildflowers and something that's a little more appropriate which is what I'm doing to the lot. Yeah, I think that's um, okay to me. I'm not I'm not a landscape design expert, but well, it doesn't I had, have um, to be. Bloom did this for me. Bloom's been doing all this stuff. I could have Bloom throw together, put together something that would okay. give you to think about. Yeah. But you know, what I'm trying to do now is I'm, you know, I'm done with the first building. I'm turning my attention to this. I have these potential tenants now. Um, 
I have to try to figure out what I'm going to do. And if I sell this lot to the business owner who needs it for parking, then I'm contained to this. If this doesn't work out, I'll probably just build another building and just stay on my slice of heaven. Because this economically is very, very good for me. But that's not really what I want. What I want to do is leave this lot open for the public at large and the businesses, use that for my overflow, and come to some compromise on this area with everybody that works for us. So with that said, can we work on two? And if I give you two, you're talking about 25, about 30 feet. I mean, I would like to, yeah, see what the site plan looks like, but I think that would be uh, enough for me to, you know, visually separate the the parking from the street. I don't know. I, Rich, do you have a feeling? What is that? the what is the hashed area that's there? That's the well, oh, that's handicapped accessible. That's a that's an entire parking space, by the way. Oh, it's because it's, it's adjacent entire... to the handicap, so you yeah. can open a van and yeah. That's an entire space. Just note that we also have not had our engineer or our traffic consultant look at this, and there's a lot of a lot of vehicle movements involved here that may also need a look. Yeah, yeah, and I think some of that vehicle movement question, which currently has the the the, the diagram in this newest plan, that the questions around that, the more spots you remove from inside here, those issues go away, because. If you know, you know, if you don't have to enter here beyond here, then these issues around turning radius. No, these turning radius. Right. Right. You can you can talk to your traffic consultant. We've looked at it. This is twenty six feet to back up and turn out. Well, I don't see where it backs up and turns because it goes right up to the edge. But even just coming in mm -hmm. from Main Street, you know, there, there's a lot going on at that um, entrance way. So I think that is just going to need a look as to mm -hmm. whether people can really turn in off of Main Street and immediately turn and get into those spots. The well, this, this is what this is. This is a 20 foot car. Yeah, no, I understand. And then what's happening here, because this is also moving traffic and parking. So there's a, a there is a lot of moving parts. I, I, it's all the more reason that so, the fewer cars we try to place there is both going to be good for flow it's going to be the right thing for what we want in this village and uh and any tenant you're hiring that do you're signing on that doesn't agree that they could beautify their front by having green space mm -hmm. then then you know isn't a tenant that's that's aligned with the what the interests of no, the village look, are. we all want to be good neighbors here but this is impractical to think anybody but an employee and, ho and that's going to be a strong arm to get them to park over there. Um, let me do this. I'll take two of these out. We'll provide a landscape detailed plan for you. If you could engage the traffic engineer to look at the movements. Yep. And then you want the civil engineer to look at it. With the new plan. They'll look at it once it's in place. I'll have it done tomorrow. Okay. Do you, who's the who's the village you know, um, civil engineer? We take care of those referrals. Yeah. Um, there's just a couple other things I I wanted to quickly mention in the Gateway District Development Standards. Um, I don't I didn't see anything in the plan about mechanical equipment, but it did say it says pretty clearly that any mechanical equipment should be screened. Um, so any, you know, it's there. You want me to screen what's there, the existing? Yes. Okay. Um. So yeah, any ground level mechanical equipment must it's, be screened. No, this um, is not ground level. It's rooftop. Okay. And there's no parapet. I I mean I I can't visualize what's what's no, there right now. There there are. Um, Couple so units up here. On might the be set back and not visible. Well, no, you can see them. Okay. I mean, I'm prepared. I'll screen them if you'd like, but they are there. And um, yeah. I mean, that's that may be something to consider. I'm more concerned about ground level, but yeah. yeah if, there's if, nothing going. If on the there. rooftop is is very visible, then 
I also think that that should well, be you can see it from here. I don't think you can see it if you're driving by or up looking yeah. up in the building. I'm more concerned about the, the streetscape walking on the for pedestrians and in the parking lots and stuff. Yeah, there's not going to be any ground level. And this dumpster will be a wooden enclosed dumpster. I'll probably plant because I have to take the asphalt. I'll probably plant some ivy, flowering ivy okay. that will grow up on it. Um, would you like us to put that type of detail on the plan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's going to be, if it's something that you're proposing, then we would like to see it. If not, we would ask for it. Yeah, and the same thing. I'm going to pull this concrete up and put bluestone here and put a bluestone patio and some seating. All of that has to be on. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd like to encourage there, you to add some bicycle parking. There's, um, there's a bicycle rack here. Okay. Currently. Great. So um, I can yeah. put another one here if you'd like. Yeah, if, I mean, if you think that would, uh, there's not enough over here for there's both a, uses, then yeah, let's yeah. add some more on the on the. I, other side. I, I ride my bike to the gym, so yeah, there's a bike rack out front. I Absolutely. Um, so I could easily do, you know, probably two bike racks. So. There are some sections on, right. This is more about screening parking lots with landscaping. Landscaping would be an effective way to screen parking and paved surfaces from view. Um, and there's some section on lighting, but I reviewed well, your lighting plan and that, that looked like you thought about that and that looked good to me. Um, and pedestrian walkway. Right. And so I'm sure you already like reviewed our village code regulations on signs, but you know, there are limits on the the size of signs and and um, if you wanted to, I guess this is going to be your monument sign here. That, or... that is actually Debbie's sign that is there now. The okay. This tenant is not proposing any monument sign. They were going to just put it on their building. This tenant already has a sign. Right. The wall's going to be refacing the Wells Fargo. Right. Um, on this side of the building, the tenant is proposing. This tenant is proposing their drive-through sign. But between the two signs, they're code compliant. So okay. we're not seeking any variances or any, any, all the signs will be code compliant. Right. If there, I mean, if there is a sign hanging off the side of the building, it would be good to just have some detail of it, some detail of the Wells Fargo, existing Wells Fargo sign. Uh, well, oh, oh, this no, one. the proposed okay. sign. Yeah. I thought we sent that to you. Okay, hold on. I, I mean, I didn't see it. Again, but it's possible. It's well, this. Well, so this is actually code compliant. I think you're allowed 30 square feet. So there'd be 15 feet here and 15 feet here, 15 square feet. So they'd okay. be code compliant. Right. 30 square feet? I think 30. Combined 30. 15. Well, whatever. But, but if they're two, maybe because they're two different. No, it's different. whatever. What we did was we had um, Timely Signs did a whole code review. Mm -hmm. And they split this and this between the existing code, what's code compliant. Okay. Well, the idea is put it in the plan and then we'll make sure we review it. Code engineer. And then, uh, yeah, the only other thing I would I would double check the both table the parking um, just to make sure that those numbers are all yeah. correct. What's happening in the in the parking table is that if I can show you, or it's on there. But so these numbers, as I if they're correct, so I would double I would double check the counting of the requirement. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's per square feet, but I think the calculations are right there. But when you add that required column up, it's 54, and what's indicated is 55. 
Okay. So we have one overestimation of what's required. And then in the provided, I'm sorry, you have my That's reach, right. Nick. And then what's provided is, is it mirrors what is there, but then there's the 24 spaces, which is the across the across the street lot, is 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 added as an additional 24. And so it says, but then it says a total of 64. And these numbers don't add up to 64. Oh. So my assumption is that they, some of they, these spots are in the 24. So then you would, down here. I don't know, but I just All think right, that we'll, we'll, we'll figure, figure out this part. We'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's the right <laughs> thing to be able to reflect against because um, it has significant implications for whether we want to approve any new parking, given again that you might have more than required already. I, so I, I just I, want to get it right and then we can consider it. Listen, I know I have more than what I need, um, but I'm trying to make it as convenient for the users as You're possible. Right. And I'm trying to also provide other businesses some parking because they're clearly using it. And one of them has a high value on it. So. All right. All right. So um, you want, I'm, I'm going to add bike racks um, on count. The, add the signs. The lighting plan is okay. Yeah, the light the lighting plan looks and the, the cut sheets for thing. the fixtures are there also. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't get a chance to look at the lighting plan. Not much has really changed, and we have to add some lights over here. But um, I guess New York State has pretty specific ATM lighting rules. Safety oh. reasons. Yes. But everything's code compliant other than where the ATM and the banks are, because that's regulated by the state of New York. It's currently out of code. No, I think this is actually two code, but they're putting an ATM over here. I thought this is uh, the drive through is going to stay. Correct. But is it is there also still going to be an ATM there? No, the ATM is moving over the here. ATM is moving, so it's only going to be a drive. -through. Yeah, they're, they're using two of these lanes. You're gonna do the, the tube thing all the way across. No, the they don't do tubes anymore. It's just a ATM. Oh yeah, so it's a drive-through ATM here, and then a regular ATM walk up there. Correct. But you're gonna keep the same carport. This I'm gonna rebuild it. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm gonna. It's gonna be the same size because they're only gonna use these two because this one's a little awkward to get into. If you look, the building's a little banged up there. So what I'm gonna do here is probably try to come up with something creative to close this off. Be helpful. Yeah, we need to see that in the plan too. Um, sounds like a change that we need to consider. Well, no, the, so you just want to see what we're proposing on the elevation, I think. Yeah, if you're reconfiguring um, yeah. that that area. No, I'm just I'm just gonna curb it. I'm just gonna put a curb here. Right now the curb goes like kind of like this. I'm just gonna put the curb this way. I'm not reconfiguring it. Close just, it off. Yeah. Okay, so that should be in the plan. Okay. So is that going to be part of this this um, sidewalk that you were telling us? About? No, this right now there's um, a walk-up window, teller window here. Um, and there's a little concrete walk and a little concrete pad that goes up to it. I'm going to remove all of this and create a bluestone seating area here. And then this has all those um, Alberta spruces and nonsense in there. And I'm going to just put a pollinator garden of wildflowers in this whole section. In the front of the building, I'm going to remove all the Alberta spruces and add um, called columnar boxwoods. They go kind of straight up. So we're going to add them where the Alberta spruces are, where the uh, sand sandstone comes down. And then we're going to put, you know, um, some annual flowers in, in between. All that has to be in the plan. I was the guy starting like next week. I'll put I'll put it on. <laughs> I was good. And, and, next week. <laughs> and I think if the Bloom folks uh, could advise, I think things that are um, both perennial and or year round green are going to be a lot more attractive than um, annual seed uh, pollinator gardens. Well, so what's there now? I don't remember exactly. It's just out. Oh, they're Alberta spurs. Maybe spruces. we could even do a site visit because there's a lot of planting already there. That the only thing that's there is a Alberta spruces and 
forget what the other thing is, but that's all that's there. And the Alberta spruces are tricky because I have to trim them and they don't trim well. They're not very user friendly to trimming them. So let's see a landscaping plan and let's see what the bluestone looks like and does. That all has to be in the plan. Okay. But you're telling me you would prefer instead of. I would love to hear what the landscape architecture would recommend for a place that we would prefer to have landscaping year round as opposed to landscaping when flowers grow in our in our zone, which yeah. is well, well, not the way it is. That might be preferable. That's why I said we can okay. do a, visit, a site visit to see it because I don't remember exactly what's there, but I do remember there's planting that lives year round there. And if you're going to tear that up and plant seeds for flowers for a few months, that would not make it. No, there'll be, there'll be the all sprinkle boxwoods in there as well. Okay, but just let's see a let's see a landscape plan. Everything you intend to do has to be included in the plan for our approval, like literally everything. And that's not a, that's not a distinct rule. That's the way this works. Well. All right, so I will come back in a couple. I'll have this. What, when does the submission have to be in by autumn? One week before the next meeting. Which is? Okay. I don't know if you're really overhauling the plan or just modifying it if it's a well what i'm hearing i may just not do anything with the landscaping which will make it easier um we have the lighting plan which i think is okay um i could talk about anything i'm changing over here i'm going to look at the parking bulk table um do you want so i'm going to repave this lot do you want me to put you know area to be repaved I don't know if that's a code question. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if that needs to be on the site plan, if it's still remaining the same material. Yeah. Lining. No, it's going to remain the same. Um, the lining. As long as the lining, the, the, the parking lining is going to be the same location across the whole lot. Right. Yeah, every, everything. I'm just going to plant these trees, and then um, there's a lighting plan that shows. Uh, well, it has to be six poles now because the ornamental lights don't throw off as much light. Right. So the gateway district calls for ornamental lighting. And so now it's going to be six poles over here. Okay. Um, yeah. And, you know, any other other landscaping detail you want to add on onto I, that? that I would think be great. we'll just leave this the way it is. We'll and just focus on be, this. If you're going to leave what's there, then what's there should be enjoyed. Because that's part of the consideration we have for what we're approving. So just count up the, take People a picture and count up the, yeah. the, the plan by developed by your architect would typically say you know existing and named. Yeah. Plants so if you have if you have a tree there, make sure there's a tree here so, so that we can. So see. you want existing plantings to remain, but you want me to count them up. How much? What they are? Yeah, and sometimes it's rough estimate, but it could say you know planted dogwood or whatever that would be. Yeah. You know, ultimately, what we're reviewing and approving is the plan in its entirety, and then that's all you can do on your lot. So, any ideas you have about things you want to do for either beautification or improvement or alteration, like eliminating one of the bays for the ATM, that all has to be. You know, there might be some things that are that are like like repaving might not be, but if but generally speaking. It, if, if, if I were to advise you, I would err on the side of disclosing all the things you intend to do, because if you don't and one of them is done and they're not code compliant or in your plan, okay. then you're going to have a so stoppage of something. I'm just going to show you the new curbing. Yes, please. So. And is, and what what would make it and like is what 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 is what does it look like how high is it so is it an appealing thing or is it no, a it's concrete a, barrier no there's existing but, there's existing curbing there now it's like um, six inch reveal and I'm just going to cut out the asphalt and do standard board concrete curb six inches mm -hmm. 
I can put a curb detail on there if you want. Mm -hmm. And then that bay will just be an open bay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My recommendation is just that it doesn't look temporary, you know, that it doesn't look sort of like a barricade, that it looks like. No, it's just what I'm going to do is I'm going to like part of the new design. Of I'm just going to put used. the curb there and, and fill it with um, concrete because it's shaded. You're not going to get anything to grow in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pre-existing. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, if you go here, you'll see how beat up it is because they people hit the buildings. Yeah. And that's really the problem. I can appreciate it. So the concept is to use these two because they're straight on. Mm -hmm. and, and right now, these aren't being used at all. Wells Fargo has an ATM machine here. Yeah. Okay. All um, right. So we get the bike racks signed on the plan. Things the um, landscaping plan. Um, you have the light details. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well. Yeah. Okay. I mean, is there any way we can make the referral at this meeting just contingent on getting the new plan so they can go out before our? Yes. Yeah. I that's what I was going to say. Let, let us. We'll have them before exactly. you for the next hey, meeting. Yeah, better to have them in hand and have everything agreed to. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. Um, finally, tonight we have PB 2404, 3 Water Street. Hi. I just wanted to make sure the board was aware. I put it in the memo that I have a past client relationship with the applicant, but um, I don't think that it precludes me from advising the board as long. I just wanted that to be on the record and um, make sure it's okay with all of you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's fine with me. Uh, yeah, so you want to tell us a little about your project? Sure. It's been a long day. Um, <laughs> sure. So I'm Lisa Barone. Um, I am one of two owners of the Herbal Confectionery. One of two businesses that are moving in to Three Water Street. Our other business is our agricultural business, Windfall Farms. Um, so we are very proud to be one of the first 26 micro businesses that have been awarded in the state. I am part of two inaugural programs. One is called the CCTM program, which is a cannabis compliance training and mentorship program. I went through their entire state program that basically tells us all of safety, uh, compliance, strategy, strategy, building out, and everything that you can do with safely building a cannabis business in New York State. Um, on top of that, I'm also part of their C team, which is a social equity program for women to own businesses and minority owned businesses. Um, what we are doing is a multi-tier thing in this space. And I think that is really important to address to the board that we plan to do this in very strategic stages. Uh, we understand that opening a cannabis business is a delicate nature. And the fact that the state is so new in the rollout of these laws, we want to ensure that we're not only complying, but we're able to continue to pivot as those laws keep building out. Mm -hmm. um, so our first stage is we are opening our farm store, which is separate from cannabis. We grow over 500 varieties, of produce, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Um, along with 14 other farmers that are part of this, we are opening a store where those products are solely made by the farmer, produced by the farmer, and being sold by the farmer. Our second stage is why we're here today, and that is simply for a dispensary. And with our license, it's really in particular to understand a micro business license. They are meant to be set as the small business of cannabis. Um, we are not a large scale retailer. We cannot buy other people's products and resell them. 
we can only sell what we are making ourselves. We have the allowance to do each part of the supply chain. So we can grow cannabis on our farm. We can produce it into flower products such as pre-rolls, smokable flour, live rosin. We can also take it and process it in, into gummies, candies, tinctures, topicals, any type of cannabis product that you would think of. We can also distribute it ourselves as well as we can retail it ourselves. Can I just ask one point of clarification? Absolutely. You say ourselves, is that just your farm or it's the collective of the 14 farms that- So the 14 produce? farmers are separate as actual vegetable produce, all separate farmers. They, uh, some of them are also cannabis farmers, but they, we cannot uh, collaborate with other cannabis farmers. Um, so what we're selling in the dispensary is solely what the herbal confectionery can produce. Um, and we are limited by a very specific canopy size with our growth. And so our ability for sale is really triggered on how much we can grow and how many products in our diversity that we can, that we can make. Um, so our plan for a dispensary is very much meant to be geared towards a mom and pop style. This is not a large scale dispensary where the square footage is a massive square footage. There are a few other dispensaries that are in pending in New Paltz. We're the only one that is considered a locked proximity. Um, and what that means with the state is that they have recognized us as already a license holder. They have recognized that our location is for proper location for cannabis and they have approved it as an active location. There is a map that I can show you guys if you'd like in where it shows the entire state of those pending and or active uh, applicants. I am currently the only one, we are currently the only ones in New Paltz who are in active status. So the yellow is the pending. The yellow is pending and, and we are the green. The other yeah. one that's in the village that's- and so I think you had brought up uh, the proximity location prior right. to the meeting. Uh, I do believe that the number is 2,000 feet from any other business. That is specific yeah. for micro business. So if they're a retailer, that is a different license. And that is a retail license. They have a different footage for allowing to be separate from each other. And there's no, <laughs> trying to figure this out. Oh, yeah. So you've got dispensaries and you've got retailers and they're separate licenses and they're separate square footages from each other. So that's the pending, are there, is there a way to see what retailers have been approved? That is everyone. That's everything. So that's yeah. everything. So as far as the Office of Cannabis Management, the state board, those are the four locations in New Paltz that have made it through enough of their rounds of licensure that they are recognized on the map. Anyone else that is coming forth with an application either does not have a license yet or is trying to plan to open a business. We mm -hmm. are the only ones right now that actually have an active business with a locked, locked proximity. Um, and the reason they chose, uh, chose us is because we are working directly with the state uh, to devise a micro business model for them. It is the hope that the micro business becomes the craft cannabis industry, just as the way that the craft brewery industry came about. We are one of the applicants that the state is working directly with to actually create those models safely and compliantly. So we are in tandem with them very closely in how we're building out our project. Um, and we are have an entire team of people working in compliance. I would also like to note that that is our lawyer, Ken. Uh, we wanted to bring him here tonight just in case there's any uh, questions that we couldn't answer that you guys wanted to arise. Um, we really have a diverse team of people who have been in cannabis for quite some time and we take it very seriously. Um, so our first rollout in that dispensary is only the storefront of a dispensary. We know that we have long-term plans for consumption, but I want it to be recognized that consumption has not been placed into law yet. We cannot open consumption lounge. We can start discussions with the state board, but we have no allowance to go there yet. Um, when we applied for our license, we had to disclose that we wanted to have long-term plans for that. That is going to require a large amount of compliance. A large of, uh, it's going to require the state to actually place it into law 
before any of us can even begin to decide to open that type of establishment. So really what we are looking at today is our straight dispensary. Um, and that is a small square footage of our space uh, that we sort of hope to become a hidden in plain sight. We understand that this is the corner of a very beautiful village. And it is a very large and visible corner with very large and visible windows. So we are taking a lot of plans of action as far as ensuring that you cannot see into the dispensary, ensuring that there is not a large amount of signage that's going to be placed outside that is, you know, we, this, that, things that we are trying to make it as uh, hidden in plain sight as possible. Um, and by doing that, what we're really trying to do is service the community first. We saw with the CGS program that was actually got to happen here in this parking lot, I believe. And that was the considered the most successful CGS program in the state. Um, it was the highest really? grossing. Yes, it was oh. the highest grossing one. It beat out every single one, including New York City. Wow. Um, so the, the desire is here. Um, and us being small farmers first, we understand value in products, value in quality, and value in safe consumption. So that is our inside cannabis plan. Um, in the exterior, we take a lot of pride in beautification because we are farmers. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, and I think that kind of plays in tandem with, you know, we didn't want to just come to the village and open up a cannabis dispensary. Uh, we read the uh, zoning guidelines for the Gateway District. We really do agree with a lot of the things that were put into there um, and think that part of what we're trying to do is give something back to the community. That space in particular, I think, has a history of being part of a lot of uh, social involvement, uh, arts and music, I think, have been kind of the past. Uh, history of that space. And I think we would like to see it still be something that's available to the community, keeping it green. Uh, we don't really have any intention of paving or, yeah. uh, you know, essentially, I think we would like to propose doing some uh, pollinator beds of biennials. Well, a and little perennials. more extensive than normal pollinators. We're looking to add much more indigenous plant life, as well as biennials that are going to either bloom all year round or we have greenery within the off seasons. We also like to do diverse planting and that there are things coming up in early spring, late spring, early summer, late, you know, we're going through the whole seasons. Um, we are working with the farmers in this area for the green space and particularly another farm named Clove Valley Community Farm, which is not too far from here, um, in which we would like to do a fully uh, volunteer project of continuous building of garden beds. So, so that all sounds great. However, we don't, we need to see that as part of a site plan. Totally. And I think the biggest issue that, that I have right now is that there's not really one cohesive site plan that shows the, the level of detail that we're looking for. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the floor plans are, are great. If we could just expand that out to show uh, the parking mm -hmm. and where the location of that landscaping that you're talking about would be. Yeah, so I'm um, working on it right now. We, okay. we've never, Full disclosure, we've never hired landscapers before because we've always done yeah, the work ourselves. So we, this was a first for us in where we were getting a professional landscape artist to sort of uh, design what we had already designed. So we have someone working on that and we plan to provide you guys a very detailed plan of that lot. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And that will include the, the parking lot yes. and all the, the spaces that you need, Yes. as well as like a calculation on a parking calculation for the different uses and stuff. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Okay. Yeah. One practical question, which is you mentioned the, we call it maybe a farmer's market that will exist for the 14 farmers. Is that currently an approved use in that space such that we don't need to review that at all? I believe it was already a retail location and we were not changing yeah, yeah, as far as I know, there is no site plan for this site. There's the not a site plan. Has. 
So the, we, we need a site plan that shows all the buildings, all the uses, everything. Right. Yeah. And I think when we initially started this process, we went through the municipal search records to uh, just see if there was anything. In, and I don't know that there's much existing. Um, yeah. So we were given the uh, pre-existing uh, pre conditions um, and that it was predating the issuance of the permits. And that so, means that the building doesn't have to be changed to meet current setbacks, but right. we still need to see everything that's on the site right. so that- we can, And its uses. Yeah, exactly. And so you had mentioned, um, you sort of said that the, the farmer's market, but what you're here to discuss is the dispensary, but actually yes. all things are what we it, want yeah. to see in the plan okay. and understand the use for and uh, consider for parking, considered for we, hours of operation, all of the things that your business will take into account. How and do that we, we provide that, that appropriately as two completely separate businesses? While I am owner of both businesses, they are completely two different uh, entities. What we're really looking at is not the businesses, but the site. Okay. So mm -hmm. we need a plan for that whole site, Okay. right? That includes mm -hmm. everything that's going on there. Yeah. Okay. So that first idea, that's part of what we all need to consider and the dispensary explanation you've given and the business idea there in that site okay. operating together, or you might propose they operate differently. Maybe one closes during one day and the other's open on that day. You know, So what, that's all what we would need to see in a site plan and understand okay. them all together, excuse me, as... Um, as uh, not as one operating business, but as multiple things that are going to happen in one location. Okay. Yeah. Says. And uh, look at this checklist that you submitted. This this is the checklist that has all the things on it that need okay. to be on the site plan. So you can give that to your design profession. Okay. Great. Um. Yep. So the explanation is super helpful and mm -hmm. congratulations. It sounds like you're yeah. in a really great position to open this type of business. Thank you. But um, I think for us to consider it the way we would consider it, just we need a plan, Yeah, site plan. We can absolutely. And I think our, our building department could advise what things mean on that checklist and give you some guidance on yeah, they, questions they, you have. Both Autumn is super been helpful. Helper. Sorry, Autumn, are you busy? <laughs> <laughs> Both the building and fire have, inspector have been helpful so far. So we we were able to walk through our first permit with them. Um, and that was predominantly in the farm store section. So now we can go back and we can make sure that that's an overall detailed plan. Um, I would want to just speak with my lawyer about it. There's really specific guidelines in what the cannabis holding company can and cannot do. Yeah. Um, and so I want to ensure that our agricultural company and our cannabis company, they need to really be stated as two separate entities. Um, and that's really important in licensing for that. Um, so I, I, I'm definitely going to provide both plans, but I think that I would need to provide almost two plans to you with all of it on top, because I need yeah. to keep the agricultural entity separate. Mm -hmm. And I would recommend be proactive on your part to have a memo that explains okay. the distinction between the businesses and explains why you can operate them together if one is a dispensary and one is a farmer's market. You know, like we might, we would look that up too and make sure it's, yeah. it's but you explaining to us why that's legal would be really helpful. Okay. Yeah. And then if you had that anticipation that, um, you know, consumption is part of the future plan, it's not for us to consider that now because it's yeah. not part of the plan now, but I would just make unsolicited yeah. advice is to make sure you- And I want to provide as much information as possible with consumption, but I also don't want, I don't want to make up a law. So mm -hmm. I want to be very careful in saying we want to open a consumption lounge when it's not put into law yet. I don't. I don't want to uh, overstep that before the state gets there. And we know that the state is going to, they're going to have to go through a pretty heavy public comment period to place that into law. And that's going to take some time. Sure. Just in terms of, I'm trying just to get the scope, your um, micro business, business yeah. do you have a limit on how much property you can include in that? I mean, or is your micro business now three acres and it can be 300? Like it's all to do with our canopy space. So our specific, how many plants we can have in the ground and how much square footage that that plant allows. We're also only allowed one growing location. 
and we're allowed a retail location. Um, so we can't all of a sudden pop up seven different farms uh, with unlimited canopy. Yeah, we're really um, limited to 10,000 square feet on one farm. And so that is done in our on our home farm in Orange County in Montgomery. That'd be helpful to include in your memo and your explanation, just because when we're trying to consider, like, as you're saying, we want to expand, but we're yeah. limited to here. It's just understanding what does that mean? Okay. Okay. And is it true that the micro business also has a limit as to the retail square footage and the revenue level of sales? No. Not in New York? No. Other states, I think it does. Yeah, other states have. Um, they are, the OCM is, is, is still building yeah. their whole department. Um, and we have been watching them and been active commenters and uh viewers throughout this whole process. Um, and I do my best to check them as much as they can when they're not really protecting farmers. Um, and so for us and why the state is really in support of us is that our entire model supports small farmers first. We have a really heavy transition to see a bunch of cannabis farm, uh, produce farmers move into the cannabis sector and then crumble because of the influx of requirements. So we're sort of, we are trying to help create models that will allow for agriculture to be positively impacted. Um, but yeah, there, it's really all about our canopy. We can only ever grow 10,000 square feet. Um, so, um, but yeah, we will be happy to provide both of those plans and we will go right to work on them as well. Excellent. Um, yeah, and thank you for taking the time to even just have us discuss this tonight. I think that we're very much uh, going into uncharted territory for all of us. Um, yeah. And, you know, we want to be as helpful and give you guys as much information as we can. Yeah. We have been required by law to go through a pretty extensive process to get to this period. So I think uh, we should be pretty quick uh, getting this documentation up to you guys, getting a cohesive site plan that gives you uh a big mm -hmm. picture of the entire use, the yeah. ways that uh, it would work, and just kind of understanding that, you know, with our design of this, um, we do not have plans to do any large changes. We will not be doing any structural changes uh, and just kind of trying to keep the historic and iconic location as it currently is. Um, we do not want to- It's an aesthetic update like to... that we are, we are going through the historical era. Uh, yes, yeah, yes. We're... another big consideration. That yeah. we'll through as well. Yes. Yeah. We, it's not uncommon for someone to come and explain their business intent and then come with a site plan, but it's our responsibility just to say, like, we really need that to really start. Absolutely. Totally we'll understood. So yeah. have you already, I know as part of the state requirements, you have to produce like a, a, a site layout, but also a security plan and storage and all, you already have yes. done all of that? Yes. Okay. So, so we you have include that. Okay, too, great. So, yeah. yeah, we have extent, we are required to have extent extensive security plans, um, more than I think I've ever seen in my entire life, um, in order to provide that it's going to be safe. Um, and we also, we chose a specific location within the building for the dispensary because it is the least viewed from that corner. Um, and we, we don't want to create a world where there is chaos because the dispensary is opening. We want it to very much feel like your neighborhood location that you can go and pick up things and go home. Um, so we, we are very strategic and we're replacing those businesses um, and we're trying to ensure that uh, flow of traffic is at the forefront of our mind. Um, we deal with that quite a bit in our home farm. Our farm is split between a road in which 18 wheelers drive past. So we think about traffic night and day. Um, so we will, can provide all of that in the plan as well. And in the, in the operating procedure, thinking about how, when, where, and when consumption would, would take place by customers would be important too. Um, I think there's some laws about that, but there's also the going to be The Clean Air some, Act is going to provide a chair. very so be hefty... Some considerations about yeah. that, like, you know, it's not a consumption site, but then it's a smoking lot. Is not going to be ideally. We have and no. I don't think um, to yeah. outdoors uh, consumption location. We see yeah, a thousand a problems with outdoor. Yeah. 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 And that's your lot. So just think about how that all, those will be the questions. You know, you'll, you're, you've you seen that there's public hearings for all applications. You're just going to want to be prepared to make sure everybody's comfortable with 
yeah. the idea that this is a, a really great way to um, have this like vertically integrated dispensary idea, but that it has to be, it's in such a public location and with high traffic and children and all the things. Yeah. And um, so we just want to make sure it's safe. We're with you on that. So it depends, our license depends on it. So we, mm -hmm. we will do every due diligence to ensure that it can be so. Great, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, I think that's everything. So could I get a motion to adjourn, please? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.